Okay, folks, so I want to share a little bit of information here concerning the A12 Ox Cart, uh, which was developed by the CIA and built by Lockheed, none other. And uh, it was highly secret uh, reconnaissance plane, a very fast, very high flying reconnaissance aircraft. And I just want to share a little bit of information. I'm not going to read um, all of these files and this articles completely. And as usual, I will put links either in the description or in the comments or on the community page. And I'll most likely upload the information up to my locals as well. And that's completely free. But um, the main reason why I really want to share some of it is because I think that um, some of these ongoing projects that they've had, ongoing for decades, I, myself personally, I, I think that it's what they've been using as their tools to own the weather, so to speak, by 2025 and for weather modification and for, you know, altering our atmospheres and more specifically altering the environment and the atmosphere around their military installations, because I'm uh, that's paramount right there. That is one of the main reasons of what began a lot of these weather modification programs and these efforts to control the weather and the atmosphere in the beginning was so that they could set up military bases and installations in different areas where the weather might not be so favorable without them, you know, influencing it and creating a more favorable environment for and you know, an installation. So myself personally, I think that it's some of these types of aircrafts here, like this A-12, that have been used for, you know, decades to help provide, you know, all the tools that they need in order to create some of the scenarios that we're seeing nowadays. And if you're not familiar with the A-12, I'll read a little bit of this here direct from the CIA themselves, right? About the A-12 ox cart. CIA developed the highly secret A-12 ox cart as the U-2 successor intended to meet the nation's need for a very fast, very high-flying reconnaissance aircraft that could avoid Soviet air defenses. CIA awarded the Oxcart contract to Lockheed, none other, builder of the U-2 in 1959. In meeting the A-12's extreme speed and altitude requirements, Lockheed, led by legendary engineer Clarence Kelly Johnson, yeah, well, that's debatable, overcame numerous technical challenges with cutting edge innovations in titanium fabrication, lubricants, jet engines, fuel navigation, flight control, electronic countermeasures, radar stealthiness, and pilot life support systems. In 1965, after hundreds of hours flown at high personal risk by the elite team of CIA and Lockheed pilots, they think very highly of themselves, don't they? The A-12 was declared fully operational, attaining the design specifications of a sustained speed of Mach 3.2 at 90,000 feet altitude. And again, remember that was back in 1965, folks, several decades ago. I believe they can go much faster and they can go much higher now, myself personally. Um, I don't want to read too much more of this, but basically it, um, it says, uh, by the time of CIA's first A-12 deployment in 1967, Corona satellites were being launched regularly to collect thousands of images worldwide each year. Although its imagery was less timely and of poor resolution than the A-12s, Corona was invulnerable to anti-aircraft missiles and much less provocative than A-12 overflights. At the same time, the U.S. Air Force was developing the SR-71, which there's a curious little story that talks about how it actually was RS-71 and then a president or something mispronounced it, and it became the SR-71. And it says a modified version of the A-12 seeing little value in maintaining both overt SR-71 and covert A-12 fleets with similar capabilities, President Johnson ordered retirement of the A-12 in 1968. Really? Right. The only A-12 reconnaissance operation, codenamed Black Shield, took place from May 1967 to May 1968. A detachment of six pilots and three A-12s based at Kadena Air Force Base in Okinawa flew 29 missions over East Asia. The panoramic stereo camera aboard each aircraft yielded considerable high quality imagery that within hours of landing was processed. From the images, photo interpreters provided key intelligence information in support of U.S. military operations during the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. The A-12 on display at CIA headquarters, number eight in production of the 15 A-12s built, was the first of the operational fleet to be certified for Mach 3. No piloted operational jet aircraft has ever flown faster or higher. Yeah, there's some images of it there. And now this is something I just, for, for a split second, I just want to point something out here. Um, I'm, you know, I was trying to find like a flight manual and I know that's far-fetched, like, you know, flight guidance, uh, data or telemetry or anything that would provide some kind of an instruction 
for a pilot to fly this because my question is if you can go Mach 3, which is like over 2,000 miles an hour, um, are you constantly having to nosedive to account for the what they call the curvature? I mean, that, to me, that would seem like that would be in the manual for a pilot or anyone that's going to be navigating or flying this thing. It, wouldn't that be in the data set and the tracking it and everything as it's on its mission? Wouldn't it show like data that would show that it's like having to do a nosedive constantly because it's going so fast? And it and it would. When you think about it, when you when you think about the information that's been provided to us about the what they call the curvature, and which is still a theory. I mean, and you still have to question that theory. Myself, I do. And when I read information like this, it talks about these aircrafts that can go over two thousand miles an hour. You would constantly have to nosedive in order to not like fly off into the so-called you know expansive vacuumous space. You know, just a, just a curious question, but I do think that it's these long-standing projects with these types of aircrafts, these crafts that can fly very fast and very high, have been used to help with some of these weather modification problem programs and stuff. And you know, when you think about it, something like that flying at a certain altitude, oh wait, I wanna go into that too, the cover story. When you think about this thing flying up at a certain altitude for an extended period of time, just going around in a constant loop, it would create a system. It would create a pattern. It would create a predictable, atmospheric environment, right? So if they were going to do it, and I'm saying that they are, but you know, for those of you that still want to doubt it and are in disbelief, you know, let's just say a hypothetical, if they were going to manipulate and alter the atmosphere and control the weather by 2025, this would probably be one of, I'm just saying, this would probably be one of the tools that they would use is these aircrafts like this, which were developed in secret, right? Yeah, you can look at this is the cover story here that was provided that they used. This is the this is a, a memo anyway from May 14th in 1962 that was sent out concerning Project Oxcart, right? And what they what they would tell the public or anyone inquiring about the project that wasn't in on the project, right? And you can go right to go to the right to the CIA.gov reading room themselves, and you can look at the FOIA information, and there's literally hundreds, if not thousands, I can go next page, next page, next page, and there's page after page of documents and different information that was released to the public concerning Project Oxcart. But I think that the cover story is kind of interesting, and I'll read this uh, quick memo here. It says, uh, Memorandum for the Director of Central Intelligence, Oxcart cover story. Mm -hmm. This memorandum is for information only. A considerable amount of research work has been done with NASA, FAA and DOD since the beginning of the Oxcart program in reference to a cover story. The sum and substance of these efforts culminated in an Oxcart cover story that explained the governing body for the program to be a committee of the above organizations who each contributed sums of money for the program. It was felt that this type of arrangement would be the only plausible explanation for the sums of money that were required to be covertly spent. Since the contracting and funding of the Oxcart program had been accomplished through black channels. Let me zoom in on that. Oh, that's too far. Oh my, yeah, that hurt my eyes. Yeah, it says here, <laughs> since the contracting and funding of the Oxcart program had been accomplished through black channels, the ostensible purpose of the committee was to conduct research in the supersonic transport field. After a more careful examination of the above story, it was realized that too many people would have to be telling the same story at the same time, and that once this explaining scenario got out of phase, that embarrassment would undoubtedly come to all members concerned. It was, therefore, recommended that a simple no comment type cover story would be adopted, adhering to the principle that the less said, the better. All persons concurred in this approach. However, they all realized that a fallback position would have to be available. Hmm. Therefore, the classified research work on, on an Air Force interceptor type aircraft would be the explanation. This is the present cover story. Hmm. The actual flight of the aircraft caused everyone again to look at the cover story, and it was soon apparent that the Air Force interceptor story had apparent loopholes. Basically, it was determined that the following issues have to be clearly explained. Why is the work being conducted in, and it's redacted? It's This would be Area 51, blank area, or I believe that's what it would be. This is unusual usual since all Air Force testing of new aircraft is accomplished at Edwards Air Force Base in California. So again, it was 
prior to this project, a lot of the testing was done in California, but they moved it to Nevada. And what is the source of funds for the project? Hmm. What were the reasons for such tight security? Why was C.L. Johnson of Lockheed Aircraft Corporation selected above other competitors, a sole source procurement? Hmm. Taking the above prerequisites to a cover story, we are now looking into the following cover proposal. The Oxcart vehicle is part of a satellite launch system that is being tested for future satellite programs. This particular tech explains the above cover prerequisites in the following way. A, since it is in the satellite field, it does not necessarily follow that the testing would have to be done at Edwards Air Force Base. B, the Defense Department can explain that the money was spent for procurement of aircraft through a classified mechanism for security reasons and in the national interest. It always is, isn't it? C, the reason for the tight security is that this conforms with the present DOD policy of restricting information concerning satellite programs. Now, why would you have to restrict information concerning your satellite programs? I mean, I could see how you would put forth a narrative to keep the adversaries from knowing what you're doing and that you're spying on them type of stuff. But I mean, that would seems like that would be around the, the perfect time to be going and putting lights up in the sky and telling everybody that they're burning balls of gas light years away, just saying. D, Lockheed Aircraft Corporation's unique experience in advanced aircraft F-104 and space slash satellite field makes Lockheed especially qualified to do the job of developing a multi-purpose advanced aircraft with particular capability as a recoverable booster for a satellite launch system. In addition, Mr. C. L. Johnson is the most experienced hand in skunk work type operations. This includes direct control and command from the top, Mr. Johnson, to the working personnel, as well as a direct line to project headquarters. It also provides the security, expedite action, minimum cost, and personnel management required for this type of program. In addition to the above, this places the program under the jurisdiction of the Undersecretary of the Air Force, N-R-O. The suggestions concerning surfacing and describing the Oxcart aircraft as a new type interceptor or bomber with characteristics slightly above those of the B-58 would have the following drawbacks with A, the B-70 bomber program development, B, the cancellation of the F-108 interceptor programs, and C, the availability of the successful F-4H Phantom II F-110 supersonic interceptor aircraft. It would be difficult to convince the technical press of an aircraft program with but a slight improvement in performance above the B-58 program. As mentioned before, military-type aircraft would normally be tested at Edwards Air Force Base. To change this pattern would call attention to the program. Hmm, you don't say. And there's a, one of these here that mentions something about, uh, yeah, this was one of them. Project Oxcart, the CIA secret supersonic airplane. And this was put up. Uh, from the national interest on October 21st, 2021, of course. I've got to go back to a nurse every year, though. Here we go. Here's what you need to remember. The A-12 wasn't just another secret project for Kelly Johnson's team at Lockheed's Legendary Skunk Works. The program was a massive undertaking in terms of both resources they expended and the results that were expected of them. The SR-71 Blackbird remains the fastest operational military aircraft in history to this day, despite leaving service more than two decades ago. Right but its Lockheed predecessor in the A-12 was actually faster. <laughs> the A-12 that would ultimately lead to the missile-packing Mach 3 interceptor YF-12 and the missile-defeating legend that is the SR-71 first took to the skies in 1962 under the CIA's banner in what was dubbed Project Oxcart. All three of these efforts were highly classified, not only because of the advanced technology Lockheed was developing, but also because, unbeknownst to Moscow, the United States was secretly sourcing materials to build these jets from within the Soviet Union. Interesting. Um, I'll put a link to this, these different articles and stuff like that. Um, there was another interesting paragraph in here. It says here uh, that it says uh, there was a titanium alloy that was up for the job, but America's titanium supply simply wasn't enough. Instead, the CIA used third parties and shell companies to procure the titanium project Oxcart needed from the world's largest supplier at the time, the Soviet Union. So <laughs> you develop this thing so that you can spy on the Soviet Union and all of this stuff, right? But yeah, anyway, um, 
With Moscow totally unaware, the U.S. bought the materials it needed to build jets that could defeat their most advanced surface-to-air missiles and fastest intercept fighters from within their own borders. Needless to say, when you are buying the materials you need to fight your enemy from your enemy, secrecy is paramount. So, when the time came to begin testing Johnson's latest creation, the powerful new A-12, Groom Lake was once again the logical place to do so. They just needed to find some pilots who were up for the most secretive job in the Air Force. And of course, you're going to find pilots that don't have wives or spouses or children or really anyone that's really close to them. You know, and again, I'll put a link in the description so you can read this whole thing if you want. I just wanted to go through that part there where it talks about Area 51 being designated to develop this project. And, you know, I see these chats. We live in a flight corridor. And there's a lot of traffic coming and going from Harry Reid. I see the patterns. I can watch the flight tracker. And it really doesn't take a genius to figure out that they can use these aircrafts, these higher altitude ones, to create an upper atmosphere environment. And for whatever purposes, whether they want to make it more volatile, more volatile, more hazardous, or if they want to make it more temperate and more, you know, um, uh, conducive to some additional testing where you want to control the flow of air in a certain area or over a certain area or control the weather over a certain area where you want to put in an installation. You know, this is it's science. Anybody that is denying weather modification and weather modification projects and the ongoing attempts for them to own the weather and control the weather patterns and everything like that, you're really, truly ignorant to science. You're the one denying the science. But um, I do think very, I, I don't, I just think that these projects like these where they're developing these aircrafts and stuff like this ox cart back then have been used for other purposes too, like to maybe create, you know, distractions when it comes to UFOs and this.